Monday evening, everyone. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. Welcome to Bedtime Chit Chat Storytime. If you've not been here before, we like to sit and listen to Dave Ramsey debt telephone calls past and present and see what we can learn from them. All right, folks. So this call happened last week. You've got to get your crap together. Hey, I'm just quoting it just as it is. You've got to get your crap together. This ran last week. So we're going to find out what the tea is. Make sure you have your teacup family because we're going to pour some tea. All right. So let's go ahead. Take this down. I am so glad you're here with me. Let's hit it, folks. Brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. So I'm reaching out today. I feel like I'm a Ramsey kid growing up. Your theme song has been like a jingle in the household through the last 26 years of my life. <laughs> um, I'm reaching out today and kind of nervous, not sure kind of what to do at this point. We make just under $100,000 a year, my husband and I, and he is getting ready to hopefully go back to school here in a couple weeks. Um, just kind of waiting on that official acceptance and we will be losing about 60% of our income. Um, Wait, they're getting ready to get okay, her husband's. Let's back up here, folks. Back up here. Okay, so they make about $100,000 together. So respectively speaking, you know how I operate on this channel. But we have two people that could earn an income, right? So that's respectively $50,000 each. Once again, a teacher household teacher household all right um the husband's getting ready to go back to school and if i heard her correctly they're gonna lose 60 i think she said 60 percent of their income holy cow if i heard that correctly she said they were gonna lose 60 percent of the income for her husband to go back to school oh, i just hit my kitty ears again um let, let's just replay that last little i thought she said 60 percent and he is getting ready to hopefully go back to school here in a couple weeks. Um, just kind of waiting on that official acceptance. And we will be losing about 60% of our income. I hope that's not losing 60% of your income unplanned, unprepared, and then a student loan on top of it. Um, and we were running numbers last night, sitting down, trying to evaluate things. And I'm just not sure what we do with such a large reduction in our income based on what we kind of saw with our expenses. Well, now people, do we think we have the tea? I think we have the gist of this story. I hope we've got the gist of this story. Do you think it's too early to pour or should we wait a little longer? All right, I'll go with the crowd. We'll wait just a little longer because sometimes I get too tea happy and pouring, all right? We don't want to pour tea till we have the gist of the story. All right, so now she's trying to figure out what they should do. Well, my first thought is you should do squat until, you know, it's, it's not just enough to look at a budget and say, hey, our numbers don't work. You need to look at a budget and then hopefully fix, prepare, plan before you take the step of losing 60% of your income. So if right now you're, you've got a hundred thousand dollar income, you know, you're going to lose 60%. Well, my logic tells me you should have prepared and planned in advance to lose that 60, meaning that 60 is in a savings account somewhere that you can draw on. Okay. That you can draw on. Well, he's in school. I don't think and I may be jumping ahead here, family, but I don't think we look at the income and go, yep, we once made a hundred thousand. Uh, we are going to be down to 40,000. We definitely can't afford it. Well, let's go ahead and charge forward anyways. Um, if you've watched this channel, okay, I, I grossed 70,000 last year. Okay. Just in time for tax season. I hope everybody filed their taxes on time, but I digress. All right. Um, I grow 70,000 and then minus my Toyota Corolla hybrid that I bought almost identical, almost uh, exactly one month ago now, minus that six to eight months worth of payment on that. Um, my total cost of living is about 40% of my take home income. So in other words, I'm able to save 60%, which is why I can pay off my car so fast. Okay. I've adapted myself to live on just a little less than half even, you know, somewhat significantly less than half of my income. Have they adapted their lifestyle to the loss of 60%? If they have not yet adapted their lifestyle to the loss of 60% and they're just going, well, we'll go ahead and we'll kick the can down the road later 
and just, uh, you know, wing and prayer it. I don't see that being a real good plan. Are you guys able to cover the basics on 60% or on 40% of your income? Um, barely. Um, we do have two kids, so we are bearing the price of child care times two. Um, on the positive side, he's old enough now. He's in his early 30s where he's going to be going to school on Pell Grants and scholarship, so we don't have to necessarily work on like, cash flow in his education. Um, but I'm just kind of concerned with how we're going to structure like our living expenses. All right. I think we have the gist of this, the gist of this call family. All right, everybody, get your teacups. Get your teacups, family. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get to pour, get ready to pour some tea. Everybody got their teacups? You know the routine. All right, family. Let's hit it with those new graphics. Let's pour that tea. <laughs> That's just so refreshing. So, if they uh, are planning on moving forward with this plan, which is what it sounds like, I mean, yeah, kudos for them calling into Dave Ramsey, but I, I don't know. This, this, to me, to some extent, seems like such a simple problem to solve. I mean, I understand that some calls have to come in and they are really complicated. What do I do with the will and da da da? But some things just, uh, this just seems kind of straightforward. And I think they may be jumping the gun a bit. Okay, they have they have a couple of kids. You tell me you're going to drop sixty grand. You basically they're going down to less less than one teacher income that's experienced. They're dropping down to less than that. They're basically going to drop down to twenty thousand dollars each. See, there's something about the numbers when you take it and you look at all available working adults. I do not count children even if the children are above 18, all right? Um, children, this is just, just the way I was raised, okay? Children don't pay the bills of their parents. Children are supposed to be busy paying their own bills. So putting away that. But the uh, the adults that you know are on the mortgage, the, per, the parent figures, the, the guardians in the household, okay? You have two of them. Now, for those who cannot see the screen, because you may simply be listening to this, my the screen says, my husband can't work because he's in school. No. I'd like to correct that. Okay. The screen does say my husband can't work because he's in school. I'd like to correct it to my husband and I don't want him to work while he's in school. Or my husband and I would prefer that he not work while he's in school. And then I'd also like to know what's the student loan going to be. How long will he be in school for? Roughly eight to 13 months. And it's a okay. full, roughly seven days a week, nine to five. They said, don't plan on working during the program because it is such a vigorous course. Okay, fine. So before you take that vigorous course, do you have money and savings that you can draw on to make up that 60%? Not only that, and I think if you're going to really try to change your uh, your lifestyle, have you actually lived on 40%? You know, I've always thought to some extent that people do it backwards. And again, family, I am aware that I am no financial angel. I've had my, my own mishaps. Okay. But I am sharing what I've learned from my mishaps. Okay. It, if you haven't actually lived yet on 40% of your income, like, Hey, we haven't done a practice run. Can we make it for three months? If you haven't actually done the practice run of, can you live on 40% of your income? I think game day is probably not the time to practice it. I mean, imagine a football team, and I don't know anything about football, except get the ball across the line and preferably try to stay away from the other side's, what is it, end zone or whatever, right? Okay. But imagine if you've never practiced that. You got the concept, you have the will, you have the desire, but you've never actually done it. Game day is not the day to start practicing those moves. So if these people have not practiced it, now if I look at my situation, I've lived, matter of fact, to be exact, I don't when my car is done, I actually live on 38.5%. I, I, yes, I mathematically broke it down. 38.5% um, to about 40, 45% of my take-home income. I've lived on it. I live on it. This is how I'm able to make about $3,000 a month car payments, all right, for about six to eight months. So I've actually done it, okay? I, I did not purchase a car 
that I could not afford and say, well, you know, I'm just going to practice trying to, you know, live at 40% of my income. I, I've, I'd already been doing it for almost half a year. I did the dry run. So when I purchased a car, it wasn't a dry run that I'm doing. I'm now skilled at it. Okay. Let's see. Next week on Friday, the debt will have gone from, because I've had the car for one month. It's like one month and three, four days or something like that. Okay. Um, it's gone from 26 to 20. So in one month, I, so in about a month and a week, I will have knocked out $6,000 in about six weeks. Okay. But I, I had already played the game. So when it was, I'd already practiced when it was time, when it was game time and I actually purchased a car, I wasn't going, Oh my God, you know what? I've never lived on 40% of my income before. I, I don't know how to do it. And then I buy a car and I can't afford it and I can't pay it off in the six to eight months that I wish. I don't think these people are financially prepared. They have not yet practiced for game day. Well, that means that means there's child care is no help at all. Exactly. Okay, so child care stays there, and you're making forty yep. k, and you can live on that, or not. If the answer is Barely, not, yeah. you can't do it. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, I don't think you know. And we've looked at a couple different options. You know, my parents are getting ready to retire, but I don't really want them spending their whole retirement watching their grandkids five days a week. Um, well, the eight to ten months is not their whole retirement. True. But even so, grandparents may or may not want to watch the kids seven days a week. Okay. I, I mean, yeah, you have to check. Have they really dry run this? I don't think they've dry run this. I think they're going to do it with a wing and a prayer. And then what happens if the schooling doesn't get done in the amount of time you plan? You know, what, what happens? True. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. um, I mean, if they want to do it. That, that's another thing. I mean, they may not want to do it. It may not be an option, but... D did I not just say that, family? Did I not just say grandparents may or may not want to do it or something to that effect? Yeah, I think I did. I think I deserve some snaps. <laughs> Yay me. Yay me. Right? We can't assume that just because, you know, the grandparents are free and available, they want to take care of the kids. Um, but, I mean, you, you, what, what's he going to study? Um, electrical lineman. So he wants to do high power voltage. Okay. And so he's making 60 now. He'll come out making 80 day one. Yeah. Right? I think they said apprentices start roughly 45 to 50 an hour flat yeah. rate, yeah. not including any overtime, you know, so the in keep car And his apprenticeship is like there. only a couple of years and then he'll be making serious money. Yeah. All right. We got to pause. We have to pause. Now, family, if you've watched this channel, you know, my feelings about jumping forward and saying, yep, in, in a year you're going to make this, in two years you're going to make this. You don't know squadly, diddly squat what you're going to make till somebody offers it to you. I could have the best laid out plan and go, yep, I'm going to be making this, I'm going to be making this by such and such date. You don't know that. It is just a projection. It's just a projection. I believe that part of what led me to debt freedom, and I have said it before and I will say it again, is I never base and I continue to not base my budget on what I could make in the future. I have always based my budget on what I actually take in. Even, even my, uh, uh, what is it? Part-time job. I don't even base that in the future. All right. I, I don't sit and go, well, you know, I might be in childcare, so I'm going to be making this extra money. I don't know that. I can assume I am. I can have the intentions of doing it, but until I, I'm actually signed up again. Let's just you know, use myself as an example. Next fall, yes, Carrie, you are part of the child care program. We have the budget for you. We have the funding for you until that has been verified. And then even then it's on a, you know, check by check basis. I, for me, okay, I'm just giving you my uh, thoughts on this. I'm not comfortable basing my future budget on money that has not been made, on money that has not been offered to me. All right? I mean, God forbid, you know, what would happen, you know, if I had to retire early for some reason? And yet I've based my whole budget on this future. Okay? What would happen if I, for whatever reason, had to take a medical uh, leave emergency for a year? For, for whatever reason, unpaid. This is why I think 
the best budgets, the most secure one are the ones that are based on what you currently earn right now. You can dream about the future. You can have a target on the future, but to sit and go, yes. And, and you know, you know, you know, I love the Dave Ramsey show family. You know this. OK, they're near and dear to my heart. Clearly, if I can listen to this many episodes. OK, um, and I got a whole YouTube channel based around them. All right. But the thing is, the thing with me is I like to base my debt freedom. I like to base, you know, where I can go on what I'm making right now, what has been offered to me right now. And I really believe it's part of the reason I became debt free. I really, really do. Because in the last nine years, I've had pay raises. We've had stimulus money. Okay. We've had things that have, I've had things that have come in that I did not expect, but that was all bonus money, so to speak. All right. With the exception of parents inheritance, I consider that blessing. That is not bonus money or anything like that. That that's a blessing. That's a gift that my, you know, late parents left me that allowed me to get this place and quickly. All right. Um, and pay most of it off. So I only had to take out about a $45,000 mortgage instead of a hundred thousand. And I still lived, I still picked a place way beneath my means. My mother, my late mother would have been very impressed. Okay. But still my, my lifestyle and getting out of debt has always been based on what I'm making right now. Not what I think I'm going to make with the next pay raise. What I, not what I think I'm going to make, you know, if I, you know, teachers, we really don't get promotions. Okay. But you know, if I said, well, you know, maybe one day I want to go into administration. All right. I, I don't base things like that because I'm not comfortable doing that. And by doing it only on what I make, I really, really, in my heart of hearts, believe it helped me get out of debt because when extra money did come in, no matter how it came in, but when extra money did come in, it w I was able to flourish with it. You know, it's like, wow, you know, these extra funds have come in. I can do something that positively impacts my life. I would rather have that than, oh my God, you know, I, I projected that, you know, two years from now I'd be at 180,000 and I'm only at 140,000. You see, I feel like basing it on what I have now and then getting money down the road that I didn't expect that to me is much more rewarding and more motivating than having this. Oh yes, I'm going to be making two, three times my income after my apprenticeship. And then for whatever reason, it doesn't come to fruition. It's, it's just my way of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. Is he going to travel with it? No, I think he plans to stay local. Um, we bought our house in 2020 for fairly cheap at a super low interest rate. So we're not really willing to give that up right now. Okay. I think he's going to travel. Have they really thought about this? Have they really, really thought about this? And again, I want to know what's the student loan debt. Cause I mean, if he's traveling, it's a whole different world, even in, in yeah. that, in that world, as you know, uh, yeah. okay. Um, well, here's the thing. Uh, it, it feels like the way you're describing this, that you first decided for him to do this. Um, and then tried to figure out if you could afford it rather than the other way around. You know what? That goes for a round of applause. <laughs> Did I not say that family? Did I not say that? Snaps. Yay me. Yay me. Exactly family. Exactly. Got to write down that marker so I know where to edit. <laughs> Pen and paper does wonders. I said that. I said, it doesn't sound like they've done the planning. All right. And he just said, well, does he intend to travel? Well, I think so. I'm not sure. Can't remember the exact words. Okay. Don't come after me on that. All right. But, but it's not, yes, he intends to travel. We've made plans and budget for it. It's kind of, well, I think, I mean, you know, we got this house. It was a good interest rate. Family, these things have to be discussed. I have learned that from my financial history. I know many of you out there have learned it from your financial history. You cannot do, I, I said it the other day, I think in a video, um, I think about a week or so ago, I said, finances don't fix themselves. Yeah, I, and I know that seems so stupid, but, but we do stupid things with our money. We make stupid moves. I did stupid things with my money. I made stupid moves, you know, finances don't fix themselves. They're doing this literally on a wing and a prayer. They've never, I guarantee you right now, I guarantee you right now, family, 
they do not have a savings account to buffer the $60,000. They have not actually sat and discussed, is he going to travel? Because we know this because he said it. Okay, they have not sat and discussed, is he going to travel? If he does travel, how does this increase expenses at home? Yes, somebody traveling might actually increase expenses, especially if they've got kids. May or may not, but have they looked at it? Okay. Um, if there's going to be a decrease in expenses, where are we going to see those decreases? How much is the traveling going to cost him? You know, how much, or should I say, how much more will he make traveling and being away from his family than he would make, you know, being at home and with his family? In other words, you know, it may sound kind of bitchy to have to do it, but you got to sit down and look at these numbers. Do we want a marriage where you're gone all the time? Six days a week, maybe seven days a week, and you come home on the weekends twice a month? I mean, and, and the other thing is this. You know that term lifestyle creep, lifestyle creep. The more you make, the more you spend. This this couple would be a great candidate for um, lifestyle creep. And they'd be a great candidate for it due to the fact that what? They haven't planned anything out. They got the expenditure part down. What's well, going to cost but they haven't figured out how they're going to pay for that. Like you should have yeah, figured out if you could afford it before he decided to do it. Because his, yeah, his primary big. job is to not become a high wire guy. His primary job is to feed his family. Yeah, exactly. And there's something else to consider too. I think she said something about like climbing poles or something like that. I don't know much of the technicals. Actually, not, I don't much. I don't know. I don't know enough to write on the smallest 3M yellow paper note. But is are there risks associated with this job that might not be associated with other jobs? Hey, I'm just saying. These are things to think about. Yep. And if he can't do that, then he can't do this. Yep, and was, he's talked about picking up like a part-time job um, or working with his current employer to see if he can work odd-end hours. What's she doing? What is she doing? I would like to know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've missed something. Jammy, help me out if I have. Um, but m maybe I've missed something here. What does she do? At least that I I'm not aware... Like I said, maybe I've missed it, but I haven't heard her say what she's going to do. All I've heard is about what this poor husband's going to do. Husband's going to go to school. Husband's going to work seven days a week going to school. Husband's then going to possibly be traveling seven days a week. Husband's going to be responsible for making the money. This poor guy's going to be turned into a flat pancake. Um, to kind of fill those gaps. But they said so not to do hoping, that. Yeah, they didn't recommend it um, until they kind of get into like the core of the program. So... Here's what I'd like to know. If they know they're doing this, the reason I'd like to know what she's doing is if it's kind of like, hey, honey, you know what, um, sweetheart, I would like to, no, we, we would like to cut down our budget by 60% for, let's just say, 18 months. For 18 months, will you go to school? Doesn't it sound like both of them should kind of be, you know, employed, working extra hours? Both of them, you got, you, you say grandma and grandpa want to take care of the kids. At least that's what, what they're, you know, alluding to the way, at least the way they're talking about it. Grandma and grandpa take care of the kids. Well, we work our asses off. Okay. For the next year, year and a half, <coughs> excuse me, saving up the money. Right now, the year, year and a half has gone by. We've saved up an extra $50,000. We'll be able to draw on that 50,000. Hell, I'll even take 25,000. Okay. We'll be able to draw on that. We're going to, we've also been practicing living on bare bones necessity. We're going in prepared. Yay. That's not what's happening. What does she do? Cause this whole thing is what he's going to do. So, and he's been working towards this roughly about six years. We've paid off roughly $7,000 in debt because Currently, we've done step one. We've been working on step two, but as soon as he started to get the beginning of the acceptance, it's just we kind of froze step step two for a minute to say, okay. How much did you guys have left, Emily? For our debt? Yeah. Not including our mortgage, about 35000 Okay. On what? Student loans, um, a vehicle, and then we put a new roof on our house after we purchased it. How much do you owe on the vehicle? Um, I want to say roughly 5000 
but okay, vehicle, I'm not, we can't quibble over $5,000 debt on that. But student loans, this is student loans that already exist. Arg, arg. Is anybody else frustrated with me? You, you, you know the thing about being this age? And you don't even have to be this age, okay? Maybe you just have to have life experience. I think it's just life experience regardless of the age. I had to straighten up my, so I got my pink, hello. I got my pink kitty ears. I had to straighten them up. They were falling off. Um, you, we can see the train wrecks before they even come. It's like, I, I can see. I can see the train coming. As a matter of fact, I don't even have to see the train coming. I can hear it. And it's going to be coming full steam ahead. This is going to turn into a $100,000 debt thing. I'm telling you. Excuse me. They're not going to keep it at 35000 Why? Something tells me she doesn't work. Something just, that's just a gut hunch. Because if she were working... I, I, I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope she works. Is there a way to, for him to delay this like a year? And Do you guys notice all the responsibility here seems to be on who? The husband. This, how come they don't say, um, so what's her name? So em, I think her name's Emily. Um, I, I can't quite tell. Part of my screen is blocked by the time. Um, why aren't they saying so I, th I think her name's Emily. I could be wrong. Okay. So Emily, um, what are you doing to help buffer the debt? Well, your husband's working seven days a week as a student. What are you doing? And you guys get in a position where you pay off debt. You can get savings or like any level of traction. If you before had no debt and had your emergency fund fully funded, you could probably see your way through this a lot more to Rachel's point. Exactly. I, I don't even have to be an emergency fund at this point. It could just be a savings account. Simply, as, like I said, e even twenty five thirty in a savings account. We're we're, we're going to cut down our expenses. We're we're going to live, you know, at forty percent. We're both going to worky worky worky. We're going to deliver pizzas. We're going to Uber. <laughs> yeah, and that's something he's considered. I just know the program he's currently in. He's you know, put it off and talked about it and applied. and So what? You know, we None of that really stuff. matters if you have hungry children. And if all you're going to do is rack up a $35,000 debt and it becomes a hundred grand by the time you get done. And even if you got public service for it, you're talking a decade. Some days, folks, I wonder how I made it through 16 years of middle school to get that student loan forgiven. Whoo! Well... I just happen to love my job, and it's my dream career. That's what made it possible. Under any other circumstance, I don't know how I would have done it. <laughs> Wham. Yeah. Wham. So, and, you he know, put it off. Oh, that's tough. Income is a scary this is grown-up land. Okay, okay. Okay, Dave, you were kind of talking over here there. But I think she was saying that the income is the scary part. Lady, Emily, now that I know her name is Emily, what are you doing to help make it less scary? What are you doing on your end with your two hands, with your brain, with your abilities? What are you doing? Because all I hear so far, family, is what he's supposed to do. That's all I hear so far. What is she going to do? Because she's going to have to step up to the plate. Yeah. Well, you got to do what you have to do to feed your family first. Why doesn't Dave ever ask what she's going to do? You know, this is sometimes where I think there's just a little sexism on this show. Just, just ever so tad, sometimes not so tad. Okay. A little sexism on the show. What is she going to do? She goes, well, I'm scared. I'm nervous. You know, I just don't know what we're going to do about the family finances. Well, what have you done? What are you doing? And what will you do? And then you do this. So you'd be in a much better condition if you said, I'm going to intentionally spend this next year getting our crap together so that when I do this, it doesn't put my family in jeopardy. Because um, you're really calling saying you can't d figure out how you're doing this. You keep saying we're barely going to make it. But what you're really saying is, is we can't make it. Isn't that really what I've been saying this whole time? Is that not what I've been saying? I think it is. Okay. Aren't you? They can't make it. I'm going to tell you right now. They can't make it. 
They have not spent so much as two months living on, living on 40% of their income. Paying the bills, feeding the children, maintaining the transportation in the household. They haven't spent eight weeks doing it. And they think they're just going to miraculously start this plan. And even with school, okay, even with school, it's not what you make, it's what you keep. What happens if it actually turns out they can keep more if, I suspect she doesn't work something, I could be wrong, all right? Um, and if she does work, guess what? She may need to work some more. Which also tells me, if they're this unplanned, they actually haven't put in the extra work hours yet. Think about it. They've n neither one of them, neither one, regardless if she works also, neither one has actually put in extra work hours. Otherwise, they'd be sitting on a nice juicy savings account. Yeah, it's just something to think about. So they have all these dreams that they want, but she's looking at her husband to fulfill it. Because even if she has a job, she apparently has not worked extra on the job. If either one of them had worked extra on the job, all right, assume, and I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt, say she works. If either one had worked extra on the job, they would have had a savings account, right? They would have had a savings account. And my suspicion is she is the one that would be more likely to have the extra time to work on the job. It's just... You know, because typically, it is true, okay, typically men make more than women. He's the one getting ready to lose his job, lose, leave, whatever his job, all right, to leave his job. And it's going to be a 60% decrease. This was unplanned. Well, looking at the numbers, I think it's slightly doable, but it's then it, it can't be slightly doable, slightly doable number. Well, you know, I think it's slightly doable that I can afford my uh, Toyota Corolla hybrid. I think it's slightly doable. Well, what, what, what about the part that isn't slightly doable? What are you going to do with that? See, this is something I've learned. I don't want slightly doable. I want tried, tested, and true. <laughs> Again, getting out of our comfort zone of our current lifestyle. Yeah, yeah but, but you got to get out of that comfort zone before game day. You don't wait until he's given up his job, all right? You're taking on more school debt because I guarantee it to you they're taking on more school debt. Okay, you don't, you don't wait till all of this happens and then go, oh my God, you know what I realized? We, we can't do this. Poorly planned, poorly executed. I'm getting into that new lifestyle and I'm just concerned. Well, I, I, know. I can handle you. I mean, I, I, you can give up your comfort zone. That, that's what, you know, that's nothing. People give up their comfort zone to live in a car. It's not comfort zone I'm concerned about. It's food. Yeah, and, you know, the necessities will be met. That's our biggest thing. You know, I'm just worried about, you know, any... Well, then, lady, go work 60 hours a week. Your husband's working seven days a week and to be a student. You said you claim that the parents will take on the grandkids. What is the problem? What is the problem? Go pick up another 20, 30 hours a week. You know... I, I got to be honest, this is not the first call family that we have listened to. And it just so happens to be most of the time, it's the wife. Not because I hate women, all right? So don't go there, all right? But it's just the calls that we get. We, we get these calls and the wife is going, well, I'm just so worried we're not going to be able to pay the bills. And my husband just needs to work harder, work faster, work more. And meanwhile, we're all looking at the wife going, and what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to sit at home and take care of the kids that are now 10 and 12 years old. <laughs> uh, honestly, unless you have a special needs child where you have someone that truly, truly needs you there. All right. But when your kids hit school age, you know, and, and you're in this type of type of position, it's almost it's almost like she she, she they want the luxury of him being a full-time student, but neither one of them wanted to put in the work to actually make it happen. And now they're just going to go on a wing and a prayer. Not the relationship for me. Thank you. Additional expenses or things that come up. How much is your house um, payment? Um, a thousand. And your take home pays 3,300. Yes. Whoa. She so she's the one that makes forty. He makes sixty. 
and you're going to run the rest of this household on twenty three hundred bucks a month, including thirty five thousand dollars worth of debt. Oh, ooh, all right, hold on, hold on, family. I I got to I I got my notepad. I got you know. Sometimes I gotta have a notepad for things. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me replay. Thing, you know, I'm just worried about you know any additional expenses or things that come up. How much is your house um, payment? Um, a thousand. And your take home pays thirty three hundred. Yes. And you're gonna run the rest of this household on twenty three hundred bucks a month, including thirty five thousand dollars worth of debt. Oh. Dang. 1000 is the mortgage, which is great. I mean, for today's day and age. So you take 3300 I am a direct instruction person. There is nothing I can do. Call it the teacher and me. I have to be able to visualize a family. If I can't visualize it, I, I just, I got to be able to see it. Wow. 2300 bucks a month after that. And that's the mortgage. That's not water, electric, gas, auto insurance. I mean, me being debt free, me being debt free with no kids. All right. I could do this. I could pull this off. I do pull it off. Okay. I do pull it off. Wow. This, 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 <laughs> this can't be done. Not with the way they have set it up. They need a buffer savings account. I'm telling you, a minimum 25 grand to help them. Again, you know, the time frame is actually not that bad. The time frame, all right, a year, year and a half. Let's just say a year and a half. The time frame isn't the problem. But the problem is they haven't prepared for that time frame. Oh, no, that's not, not going to work. The math. What is it they say? Math doesn't lie. Put your motions aside and everything else. Math doesn't lie. I remember, family, they haven't even done this yet. H has she dry run this? Has she actually said, okay, honey, next month we're going to take $2,300. We're going to give 1000 to the mortgage. Excuse me. We're going to take $3,300. we are going to give 1000 to the mortgage, and we're living on 2300 a family of four, or whatever number of kids it is they have. I think she said they have two. A family of four and 2300 <laughs> Bull. That's, that's, Bull. Yeah, crap. that's what we're, yeah. The numbers aren't crunching. And no, not they're not. And that's what I have said, too. Yay, me. Yay, me. I've been saying that the entire video. So I deserve snaps for that. I said it even, I, I alluded to it even before Ray, Dave Ramsey said so. So I, I got snaps for that. Not crunching at all. Yeah. So they're crunching, but it's not a good sound to crunch. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah. He, they, they, they can't do this. They can't. They are not ready to do this. This is, they are not game day ready. They are not showmanship ready. They haven't even, I mean, they're not even ready to, to pick out uniforms yet. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I would wait, Emily. Listen, Honestly, I, 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 I don't, I'm not a dream killer, but I love killing nightmares. I don't call it, you know, I agree with Dave. It's not about dream killing. But it's when you see something, you're like, oh, my God. I mean, I'm serious. They could find themselves in a worse mess. No, not they could. They will. If they go through with this, they're going to. And they don't seem to have really good financial management. So they'd be the type to also be susceptible to lifestyle creep. Now, I, I, I will admit that, that, that um. You know, the other day I, I did buy some body lotions and bath washes for myself at Target because, well, I like it. I spent about $50 and it was worth every penny. But that's like my big, ta-da, okay, for the week expenditure, all right? That to me isn't heavy-duty lifestyle creep. But where they're headed, yeah, definitely a lifestyle creep issue. Oh, their car, I got to hand it to them. Their car, 5000 on the car, that's cool. Yeah. And so... um I don't want to kill his dream, but if his dream puts his whole family, you know, you call me back eight months from now. Yeah, he went, but we're in foreclosure. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to sign you up for that and, and have my stamp of approval. On. I, I, and I don't, I won't stamp my approval on it either. Mr. Ramsey. I, I don't give it a stamp of approval either. I want him to go do this, mm -hmm. but I want him to do it in such a way that he doesn't put all of you guys in jeopardy. And he, he doesn't want to put you guys in jeopardy. I, Think he shouldn't even do it till they've discussed whether or not he's going to travel or not. What type of marriage do you want? 
But it, you just you guys have not thought this through until last night. That kind of makes you just go shudder. <laughs> yep. So we've been, you know, looking at stuff, and at, you know, I've pretty much run our budget. I mean, he's not a spender. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Breathe, breathe, as somebody would tell me. Okay. Um, he's not a spender, but oh, I see a gnat. Okay, he's not a spender, but studio lights. Sorry, guys, when those gnats appear, I have to get them. Um, he, he, he may not be a spender, but you clearly are not savers. You um, don't budget, right? So you, you, you got financial issues. Um, it's not the question. I'm, just it's not, I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm saying you guys have, together have not thought this through until last night. And you have to. Stephen Covey says one of the seven habits of highly effective people is they begin with the end in mind. And last night you did that for the first time on this, and it took your breath away, and that's why you called. Yeah. Notice I did not have to call Mr. Ramsey and say I'm buying a new vehicle and I'm going to pay it off in six to eight months. And eight months is if I decide to go real slow. Eight months is like, you know, I, I, I just I just got to take my time. Okay, that's eight months. Six months is gazelle intensity. It might settle on seven and I'll accept that too. <laughs> but like I said, next week on Friday, okay, or actually I should say, yeah, about a week. All right, uh, it'll be down 6,000. So I will have averaged about $1,000 a week. Eh, but that's because it was planned. And I had already lived on a budget, right? This is them sitting in bed, you know, looking l l looking at some probably, you know, brochure on whatever it is that he wants to do, go climb wires or something. And, hey, honey, that sounds like a good idea. And has she ever thought, I know this may be something that, you know, she, she I don't know how self-absorbed she is. Does he really want to do this? Really? D does he really is this his dream? My dream is to be away from my family a month at a time so I can go climb poles and stuff. Is this really a dream or is it more just because it's a way to make more money because you really don't know how to budget your money? And if that's what it really is, can't you solve it and have him be at home as well? It's just something to think about. Yeah, because I just wasn't sure on yeah. what to do. And so like, here, here's what I'm going to tell you. If I... And what he's going to tell you is you should, um, first, you need to make a plan. You should have a clear budget, right? You would work to pay down the debts that you currently have, all right? Get that down to next to nothing, and then retry this again, maybe in another six months, year or so. I were in your shoes, here's what I would do. My first choice would be for him to wait a year. <laughs> the suggestion is excellent. You know, I just love it when I'm on point. Yay me. Yay me. <laughs> it's the little thrills in life, all right, people? It's the little thrills in life. And if it if it takes 18 months or if it puts the whole thing in jeopardy, so be it. I'll call that God. And so God put it in jeopardy because God says don't do things where you can't feed your own family. Something my student loan debt taught me. Okay, going back to school when you're already in debt, never a good idea. You're already in debt, whether it's credit card debt, student loan debt, whatever. You already have a debt and you go back to school and all that does is build on more debt. But if we want to keep it, let's just say specific to student loans, okay, having a student loan already and then going back to school to put more money on top of the student loan that you have, not, not, not advisable with my life experience. Those that don't take care of their own household first are worse than an unbeliever. Bible, okay? So we, we're, you know, we're going to call it that. Now, the if, but I am, but I am convinced that if he can get in there this round, he can probably get in another round. So that's yeah. choice one. Choice two is, you guys look around there and figure out how we're going to increase our income above your base. And mom and dad are going to commit to keep the kids. And Thank you. Thank you. Drop your daycare bill because your daycare bill is mm -hmm. probably, what, two grand a month? Yeah. But remember, she said that, you know, that, that they could slightly make it after they paid uh, 1000 for the mortgage on 2300 
right? So, so, so we got two grand a month between the mortgage and the daycare bill. Now we're down to 1300 for everything else. Because, you know, I know it's easy for us to sit and go, how do they not see it? But guys, we, 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 ha we have to stay humble and we have to look at our own situation and we have to ask ourselves the same thing. How did I not see that I could not afford that car? How did I not see that going back to graduate school where I already had a student loan wasn't a good idea? We don't see it because we put on those blinders because we want that goal. We want that dream. We, we want what we believe will make us more financially viable, make us feel more personally fulfilled, yada, yada, yada. That's why we don't see it. And sometimes, folks, we just don't see it. Lack of experience. Lack of someone being able to show us. Lack of someone being able to lead us. Perhaps it's our own self-esteem. It is a plethora of things that allows us, that, I mean, excuse me, that keeps us from seeing it. But when we step outside of it, when we look at somebody else's situation, we can see it plain as day. Right? Honey, to your daycare in your house and you don't have any money left for food. I just did that. Yeah, so that's over. And we're looking at child care alternatives and reaching out. Yep. Why does nobody say, Emily, you need to work more hours? Emily, how many hours are you working right now? Okay, so you work 40 hours a week. We need to get you up to 60. Because you know on this channel, I'm against people working two full-time jobs. I think it, it mentally just destroys you. That's my experience, and that was in my 20s. Okay, so that's why you, you will, on my channel, you will never hear me say, I think you should work food two full-time jobs. You mentally go cuckoo after a while. I, I, that's just my opinion from my experience in being in my early 20s, just before I went uh, bankrupt, all right? And I was trying to do two full-time jobs. I, I couldn't do it. But a good, hearty 60 hours a week, yeah, it's kind of bitchy to have to do, but it can be done. Oh. Trying to find lower Wait a minute, costs. is your, no, your childcare two grand a month? Yeah. That's a thousand. Three thousand. There we go. Now we're down to three hundred dollars left for the budget. Let's give a round of applause for that. <laughs> Boy, they really thought this out over their bedtime chit chat. <laughs> Your take home's thirty three hundred. Your budget's not tight. It's impossible. <laughs> you cannot go forward unless you adjust something. The brains probably should be adjusted first. That would be my recommendation. Adjust the head. Adjust the head first to get it to realize it. Wow. It's okay. fantasy. Okay? You don't All right, people. I think we've uh, got this figured out. It's a fantasy, it's a dream. Actually, no, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare we're trying to avoid happening. People, I'm Carrie this is student loan chit chat i want to thank you so much for joining me for this evening's bedtime chit chat story time i hope you will consider subscribing don't forget to join me tomorrow night on tuesday right here at the computer deck all right and i will see you all tomorrow right here at least that's the plan good night everybody